Hey guys, all right, I wanted to do a quick um, intervention. A student came into my office and they pointed out this figure to me. So this is uh, figure 1527 in your textbook as we're talking about the metabolism of fructose. So if we look at this figure, here's fructose um, and it can enter into um, glycolysis in the muscle, so here we have uh, muscle cell. So if we're in the muscle cell, fructose can enter directly into glycolysis um, utilizing hexokinase, which is that same enzyme in, um, that utilizes gly glucose in glycolysis. So we phosphorylate hexokinase to make fructose 6-phosphate, and then we can continue on into glycolysis um, using uh, fructose 6-phosphate, just as if we were um, starting from glucose, okay? We just don't have to do that one isomerase reaction. However, in the liver, uh, we see that fructo fructose is metabolized differently. So um, hexokinase in the liver is a little more specific and does not recognize fructose um, like it does in the muscle cell, so we have to use another kinase. Um, we have to use fructokinase. So fructokinase is going to phosphorylate at the 1-phosphate as opposed to the 6-carbon. So we get a 1-phosphate uh, fructose instead of 6-phosphate fructose. And then instead of um, transferring the phosphate group to make fructose 6-phosphate, we then um, cleave fructose, so we open fructose, and we cleave it um, using an aldolase to make glycerol aldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate, or DHAP. So you know DHAP can be e easily isomerized to make GAP. However, glycerol aldehyde has to first be phosphorylated in order to make GAP, and then GAP can be shuttled into glycolysis um, in the liver. Now, there's another pathway um, where glyceraldehyde can um, be reduced to make glycerol, and then phosphorylated to make glycerol 3 phosphate, and then um, reduced, right? Yeah reduced in order to make DHAP, and then it can isomerize into GAP, and then enter in glycolysis. So the question the student asked me, well, why? Why do we have these two different pathways? So we've got pathway one, where we just phosphorylate um, directly to become GAP, and then pathway two, where we have to go through three reactions. So we have to do two oxidation reduction reactions and one um, uh, phosphorylation reaction in order to make the same product. So actually it's pathway one is just one step where pathway two requires one, two, three, four steps. So two oxidation reduction reactions, one um, transfer of a phosphate group, and then one isomerization reaction in order to make the same um, glycotic intermediate. So the reason is, is if you look at two of the glycot or two of the intermediates in the fructose metabolism on this pathway, what do you notice? So we have glycerol and glycerol 3 phosphate. So what's the one thing that you realize that these two intermediates can do? So if you said these two are both, oops, both of these intermediates, uh oh, I'm moving my picture and I don't want to do that. Okay, we're good. Okay, so both glycerol and glycerol 3-phosphate are um, subunits of lipids. Okay, so if you remember, um, the liver is where most of our lipid synthesis occurs. And so if we um, metabolize fructose and we're in need of... Um, lipid synthesis and we don't need glycolysis. So if glycolysis gets turned off and get, gets inhibited, you'll see that we have a buildup of glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate in the liver, which will then um, cause a buildup of glycerol aldehyde and DHAP. 
and then we can convert these metabolites into glycerol or glycerol 3 phosphate and then we can shuttle these metabolites into lipid synthesis versus glycolysis. So that's the reason this alternative pathway of fructose metabolism occurs in the liver versus in the muscle tissue is so that we can develop um, and synthesize lipids. And this is again another reason um, why eating or consuming too much fructose can then trigger or cause um, fatty acid liver because um, two of the metabolites in fructose metabolism are starting materials for lipid synthesis. So if, if ATP is fine, we have enough ATP and glycolysis gets shut off, then we're going to start triggering more lipid synthesis. And if we have an excess of fructose, it's going to get shuttled to create more fat versus um, um, creating um, ATP and glycolysis or getting converted into um, glycogen for glycogen storage. Okay, so I just wanted to um, throw that out there um, so that we can talk about this more in class or if we had any other questions um, as to why we had two pathways, one that seemed a lot more complicated versus the more simpler pathway. All right, I will see you guys in class next time.